This question E1, this question is about some of the planets in the solar system. You have to have quite a knowledge of the solar system, the basic facts of the solar system. So four of the planets in the solar system are Mars, Venus, Jupiter and Neptune. List these planets in order of increasing distance from the Sun. So it's nearest to furthest. So the first one would be Venus, then Mars, then Jupiter, then Neptune. And then list these planets in order of decreasing diameter. So it's going from the biggest to the smallest. And I think it would be, I'm not always totally clear of this, but it would definitely be Jupiter, would have the largest, and then Neptune. And then I think it is Venus and then Mars, but could be incorrect on that. I don't keep those myself in my brain. Okay, so going down to this one now, this is the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, which is a very important diagram that you need to be able to use. So this question is about the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram and using it to determine some properties of stars. The diagram shows the grid of the HR diagram on which the pos position of selected stars are shown. Luminosity S is the luminosity of the Sun. So we have this as a ratio of the luminosity to the luminosity of the Sun. So this 1 times 10 to the 5 basically means that this is a hundred thousand times brighter than the Sun. This 1 over here is your the Sun would be would be somewhere around about there. It would be the it would be on that main sequence and it would be there. Here's the surface temperature in Kelvin. It goes from smallest on the on the right hand side to, to larger, so it's increasing towards the left. So draw a circle around the red giants, label that R. These over here would be your red giants. This one over here would be a super red giant because it's really big. And, but the color of it is in this range over here, which is your red range over here. This is your sort of yellow range over there corresponding to the sun. Draw a circle around stars that are white dwarfs. These over here would be your white dwarfs and we need a W there. And then draw a line through the stars that are main sequence stars. So this would be through there like that. Okay, going on to the next question here. So it says, explain without doing any more calculations how astronomers can deduce that star B has a larger diameter than star A. So let's just go back to our Hertzsprung-Russell diagram here. So we've got this, we're saying that star A, star A uh, is this one over here star A and star B. So star B um, we are saying has got a larger diameter. It's actually a bigger star than star A. Why could we say that without doing any calculations? Well in looking at this we see that they both got roughly the same luminosity. So the the luminosity of A is roughly equal to the luminosity of B because they both about um, 1 times 10 to the 5. Actually B is, is a little bit bigger than star A. But star A's temperature, the temperature of A is greater than the temperature of B. This one here is just over 3000 and this one over here is something like 4200 Kelvin. So when we think of this formula over here this gives you the luminosity. See how the luminosity is dependent both on the surface area and the temperature. So because we have that the temperature of A is greater than the temperature of B and due to this formula L is equal to sigma. Sigma is a, a constant for both A and T to the 4. Because TA here temperature is higher and the luminosity is the same therefore A of B, the surface area of, of B must be greater than the surface area of A for the luminosity to be roughly 
the same, roughly equal. So it's very important to when you explain this sort of question because if we go here, we will see that um, the it's three marks here. So to get the three marks here, you basically got to mention three things here. You got to mention that the temperature of of A is bigger than B. You've got to mention that the luminosity is roughly the same, and therefore, according to the formula, this formula over here, the area of B must be bigger than A. Fine, going on to question C, we have, using the following data and information from the HR diagram, show that star A is at a distance 800 parsecs from the Earth. And we're given the apparent brightness of the sun and the apparent brightness of star A. We're also given the mean distance in terms of our AU. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out my distance of star A in AU, uh, astronomical units, distance from the Earth to the sun, and then convert it to parsecs once I've got that value. Now because they're talking about apparent brightness, I would use my apparent brightness formula, which is that one over there. So you have that B is equal to L over 4 pi D squared. So I can change that formula around to be D squared is equal to L over 4 pi B. So I can get the ratio of the two. So let's have the D of A squared is equal to L of A which is actually equal to, when we go to our Hertzsprung-Russell diagram before, um, it's equal to 10 to the 5. I'll just go back to that a bit later maybe. Uh, but if you just turn there now and look at it, it's not so easy for me because I'm going to have to wipe this out. But look at it now, you'll see that it's LA is 10 to the 1 times 10 to the 5. So I could actually just change this and write this straight away as 10 to the 5 ls divided by 4 pi and we're going to have b which is going to be um, 4.9 times 10 to the negative 9. Now I can divide this by my d from the d squared from the sun and that's going to equal um, so I'm going to divide this whole thing through there by ls because that's of the of the sun and then it's going to be 4 pi um, and now we're going to have times 1.4 times 10 to the 3 and remember these are both square roots so in actual fact because we're doing a division I can put a square root over the whole lot here now when I divide I'm dividing a fraction by another fraction I can invert and time so basically what's going to happen here I'm going to times this one by ls um, and here I'm going to have at the top 4 pi 1.4 times 10 to the 3 like that so that's going to go there you're going to see that our ls is going to cancel our 4 pi is going to cancel and so we're going to get this this becomes 1 and obviously that squared goes away because I've taken the square root. And so I'm going to do that on the calculator. So we're going to have um, 10 to the 5 times 1.4 to the power of 3 divided by um, 9 times 10, sorry, 4.9 times 10 to the negative 9. So divide by 4.9 exponent minus 9. Enter, and I get something 2.857 exponent uh, times 10 to the 16. I'm going to take the square root of that all, and I get this number over here. I get this number of... Um, it's 169030850 and I've got here I, I've got here just to erase I've got that 
1 parsec is equal to this. So this answer that I've got here, I'll just write it out so, so that you can see it and you can see it on your own calculator. It's something like 1690308500.9. That's what's on my calculator now. I'm going to divide that by that because this is actually a distance in astronomical units, but I want it in parsecs. You see, I want 800 parsecs. So I must divide this by that. So I divide by divide by 2.1 times 10 to the 5 and I get 804. So that's equal the distance in parsecs of my DA is equal to 804 parsecs which is approximately equal to 800 parsecs. And then finally at the bottom for this question it asks the question, explain why the distance of star A from Earth cannot be determined by the method of, method of stereoparallax. Well, star A is 800 parsecs away. The, this method of stereoparallax works up to about 100 parsecs is the, is the maximum. After that, this um, this parallax angle, the parallax angle becomes too small, becomes too small to be measured. All right, so uh, the star is beyond the uh, beyond the reach of using this method.